go out and shall separate the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My dear friends, today we celebrate the feast day of a great Franciscan tertiary, the patroness of the Third Order, St. Elizabeth of Hungary. My dear friends, truly she was an exemplary woman who took to heart what today's Gospel tells us. Today's Gospel tells us that we must have our treasure in heaven and here on earth we must realize that the most important thing in this world is that we live for heaven and not for earth. Our faith is the pearl of great price that we must sell all. Lest, my dear friends, lest what happens at the end of that today's gospel, at the end of the world will be separated and the good will be put on one side and the evil on the other. And those that are put the evil shall be go to hell for all eternity. This is why we need to work for the salvation of souls. It's the highest law. It's the most important thing in the world. To save your soul. What does it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his soul? My dear friends, these are very important words and we must make sure we live them and try to save as many souls as we can, first with our prayers, and then with our admonitions, telling people how important it is, and not to live for this world. This world is passing away. Eternity remains. Can we even imagine somebody losing their soul for all eternity in hell's fire? It will never, never, never end. At least in this life, we have a little respite, a little rest, a good meal once in a while, a little vacation, a little holiday, and so on. But in hell, there'll be nothing but suffering. Can we even imagine it? Think about it. It's beyond our comprehension. And this is what Saint, all the saints teach us, and St. Elizabeth especially. She who was a queen, who had everything at her disposal, she gave it all up to feed the poor, the hungry, to do good. She was a marvel, an absolute marvel of suffering. And later when her husband died and his brother took over the kingdom, she was thrown out and she lived on, in poverty and she had to beg food for her children. And she never complained. She rejoiced, rejoiced. That's what Jesus said, didn't he say that in the Sermon on the Mount? Blessed are you, blessed are you when men reproach you and say all manner of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad, your reward is great. She was willing to suffer it for, the, for her soul and the souls of others. My dear friends, this is the saints. This is what we need to do. Blessed are you when men persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad. This is the essence of the Beatitudes, the highest Beatitude, to rejoice in suffering for Christ, to be like Jesus. And this is what St. Elizabeth was. She was happy, happy to suffer something for Christ. She who had everything and then had nothing. My dear friends, these are the saints of the 13th century, the time of St. Francis. I'm reminded of a book, a great historian, William Thomas Walsh. William Thomas Walsh, the 13th, the greatest of centuries. Which is the greatest century the world has ever seen? According to his book, the 13th is. And among the great saints of the 13th are the many Franciscans and the many tertiaries and the many, many, many women who, and men of course, but especially the women of the, the various house, of the household who were queens in their various countries. My dear friends, 
This is a joy. God, the Lord gives sanctity to all. Saint and our friends, blessed, not blessed, but Don Prosper Gonanger in the on the commentary on Saint Elizabeth of Hungary talks about how God gives sanctity. He is the sole author of both grace and nature, and inviting them in spite of the, the fall to honor him unitedly in his elect. He causes sanctity to become a glorious heirloom handed down from generation to generation in the same family on earth. Among those races, none can compare with the royal line beginning in the ancient Pannonia, spread its branches over the world in the most flourishing days of Christendom, rich in virtue and studying beautifulness, as scripture says. It brought peace into all the royal houses of Europe with which it was allied and the many names it has inscribed in the golden book of the blessed perpetuate its glory. Among these illustrious names and surrounded by them as a diamond set in a circle of pearls, the greatest in esteem of the church and of the people is that of the amiable saint who was ripe for heaven at the age of 24 years of age and who ascended on this day into the company of Stephen, Emmerich, and Ladislaus. Elizabeth was not inferior to them in manly virtues, but the simplicity of her loving soul added to the heroism of her race, a sweetness whose fragrance drew from her along the path of sanctity. Her daughter, Gertrude of Thuringia, and her relatives, Hedwig of Silesia, Agnes of Bohemia, Margaret of Hungary, Kunigunda of Poland, and Elizabeth of Portugal. My dear friends, this is one family. And as you know, in those days, the various kings and princes would vie for the hand of, of these virtuous women, offering themselves in marriage. And the marriage was, were, were arranged between the various kingdoms. And this is why we have so many sitting on the thrones of various countries in this, at this time. It was a wonderful time for Christendom. Holiness reigned, holiness reigned in all these kingdoms. And many of them came from this family as we see here with St. Elizabeth. And we rejoice today with her. She who became a Franciscan tertiary and received a special gift from St. Francis himself and treasured his cloak that she gave, that she received. And she who lived the life of a Franciscan tertiary in poverty, in poverty and prayer and so on. My dear friends, these were the people who took the treasure, the pearl of great price. And the only important thing for them was to save their soul and to give everything for the Lord. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what profit is given to those who give everything, everything to God and want nothing for themselves? Who can even imagine how God is going to bless them for all eternity? And they will shine like stars. So let us rejoice with St. Elizabeth and all of her relatives and all those people of that century and all the centuries, all the, all the saints in heaven. Let us emulate them. Let us imitate them. Let us, be, let us live only for heaven. Live only to be saved and to bring as many people as we can, especially all of us, as I look out of all of us and see so many gray hairs, all right? And those people who don't have gray hairs, however, you don't have gray hairs, you should have gray hairs. We're all getting closer and closer to heaven. My dear friends, I can't wait. I hope I'm ready. I know I'm going to have to spend a little time in purgatory, hope a little time, and I pray for those poor souls, especially my relatives. Pray for the poor souls, and we pray for them now during this month of November because they are being purified as we need to be purified better in this life, 
better to be purified in this life and suffer in this life than in purgatory. But let us pray for them and let us long for heaven. Long and live only for heaven. Live only for heaven, as Padre Pio would say. Think only of heaven. The eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, nor has it even entered the mind of man what God has prepared for those who love him. What magnificent words from St. Paul. My dear friends, let us meditate on these things continually because we're getting closer and closer and closer as the days go on. But let us pray that we will be ready and let us pray for all of our friends who have died and all those who are dying, that they too will have a, a happiness for all eternity. Pray your holy rosaries for this intention, that souls will be saved. May the Lord bless you.